starting in, in probably 1981 or 82, uh, there were probably 40 research papers in, in put out by the research community, with all, all of which had the following theme. Well, relational databases are supposed to be terrific. So we tried out using one in application X. And X is a variable with 40, 40 values. And guess what? It didn't work all that well because of Y. And there's 40 Ys. And uh, therefore, we in, you know, here's the stuff we invented to fix the problem. And so there'd be a whole bunch of suggestions. Were these particularly so, industries or applications so or some combination? CAD, CAD, text processing, okay. dot, dot, dot. So it, it became pretty clear that relational databases didn't work outside of business data processing at all. Because these bunch of examples were all other stuff other than business data processing. So, you know, one of the places where they really didn't work at all was, was geographic information systems. And one of the main people at Berkeley who was interested in, in Ingress was a guy named Praveen Varaya. Who Spell, did please. V-A-R-A-I-Y-A. -A -A. So he did urban systems and was very interested in geographic, geographic data. And it just didn't, it didn't work in relational databases. So, and so I looked at these papers and saw onesie solutions to various vertical markets. So I said there ought to be a better way to fix relational databases than, than what people are proposing. So we came up with the notion of abstract data types, which are now in all the relational database systems. And we wrote a paper in 1983 that sort of said, Here, here's how to do a much more general way of, of extendability in, in relational databases. And at that point, uh, up until then, we had, we had been extending Ingress. So we still had the university version of Ingress. And we still had a full-time programmer and three or four students. And we were doing various, various things. And this was on the non-commercial version of Ingress right. you were using. Okay, thank you. But it was clear that this was not a viable long-term strategy. So at some point, you had to bite the bullet, throw everything away, and rewrite it. So in 83, we decided to throw everything overboard and start writing Postgres. <clears throat> so, and the... And so, so basically, we started building a new database system called Postgres. And, and this was, was actually in, during the mid-'80s, not, OK. This was in 83. OK. And so the key, the key goal of, of Postgres was extendability, which is make it work on GIS, make it work on document management, make it work on CAD. Uh, the second thing was to uh, by then, people had had put in uh, had put in referential integrity, had put in the notion of triggers. So there were sort of these ad hoc uh, ways of fixing up the database system. So put in a much more general rule system. And then the third thing, which you know I wish actually had gone somewhere, was. Uh, you, you hear lots of people say, if you look at, at double entry accounting, they don't ever overwrite anything. You put in corrections. And so relational databases have this notion that you want to update something. You, you overwrite the old value. So, we, so I said, gee, it would be fun to build a system that didn't do that, that kept the old value so that you could then... You had a complete trail going so, back. So you could rewind time and do time travel. So Postgres did all of that. And, uh, and so it was a very, very innovative system that we worked on throughout the mid-'80s at, at Berkeley. 